Maccabeum Rishon, 1 Maccabees, 2. In those days arose Matit Yahu, the son of Yahu Hanan, the son of Shimon, a priest of the sons of Yariv, from Yerushalayim, and dwelt in Modin. And he had five sons, Yahu Hanan, called Kadis, Shimon, called Dasi, Yahuda, who was called Maccabi, Eleazar, called Avaran, and Yonathan, whose surname was Athos. And when he saw the blasphemies that were committed in Yahud and Yerushalayim, he said, Woe is me! Wherefore was I born to see this misery of my people and of the holy city? and to dwell there when it was delivered into the hand of the enemy and the sanctuary into the hand of strangers. Her temple is become as a man without glory. Her glorious vessels are carried away into captivity. Her infants are slain in the streets. Her young men with the sword of the enemy. What nation has not had a part in her kingdom? and gotten of her spoils. All her ornaments are taken away. Of a free woman she has become a bondservant. And behold, our sanctuary, even our beauty and our glory is laid waste, and the other nations have profaned it. To what end, therefore, shall we live any longer? Then Matit Yahu and his sons rent their clothes, and put on sackcloth, and mourned very sore. In the meanwhile, the king's officers, such as compelled the people to revolt, came into the city Modin to make them sacrifice. And when many of Yashadael came unto them, Matit Yahu also and his sons came together. Then answered the king's officers and said to Matit Yahu on this wise, You are a ruler and an honorable and great man in this city and strengthened with sons and brethren. Now therefore come you first and fulfill the king's commandment like as all the heathen have done, yea, and the men of Yahuda also, and such as remain at Yerushalayim, so shall you and your house be in the number of the king's friends, and you and your children shall be honored with silver and gold and many rewards. Then Matit Yahu answered and spoke with a loud voice, Though all the nations that are under the king's dominion obey him and fall away every one from the belief of their fathers and give consent to his commandments, Yet will I and my sons and my brethren walk in the covenant of our fathers. Far be it that we should forsake the Torah and the ordinances. We will not hearken to the king's words to go from our belief either on the right hand or the left. Now when he had left speaking these words, there came of the Yahudim in the sight of all to sacrifice on the altar which was at Modin according to the king's commandment. Which thing, when Matit Yahu saw, he was inflamed with zeal, and his mind trembled, neither could he forbear to show his anger according to judgment. Wherefore he ran and slew him upon the altar. Also the king's commissioner, who compelled men to sacrifice, he killed at that time, and the altar he pulled down Thus dealt he zealously for the Torah of Elohim, like as Pinikach did unto Zimri, the son of Shalom. And Matit Yahu cried throughout the city with a loud voice, saying, Whosoever is zealous of the Torah and maintains the covenant, let him follow me. So he and his sons fled into the mountains, and left all that ever they had in the city. 
Then many that sought after justice and judgment went down into the wilderness to dwell there. Both they and their children and their women and their cattle, because afflictions increased, sore upon them. Now when it was told the king's servants and the host that was at Yerushalayim in the city of David, David, that certain men who had broken the king's commandment were gone down into the secret places in the wilderness, they pursued after them a great number, and having overtaken them, they camped against them and made war against them on the Shabbat. And they said unto them, Let that which ye have done hitherto suffice. Come forth, and do according to the commandment of the king, and ye shall live. But they said, We will not come forth, neither will we do the king's commandment to profane the Shabbat. So then they gave them the battle with all speed. Howbeit they answered them not, neither cast they a stone at them, nor stopped at the places where they lay hid, but said, Let us die all in our innocency. Heaven and earth will testify for us that ye put us to death wrongfully. So they rose up against them in battle on the Shabbat, and they slew them with their women and children and their cattle to the number of a thousand people. Now when Matithyahu and his friends understood thereof, they mourned for them right sore. And one of them said to another, If we all do as our brethren have done, and fight not for our lives and Torah against the heathen. They will now quick, quickly root us out of the earth. At that time, therefore, they decreed, saying, Whosoever shall come to make battle with us on the Shabbat, we will fight against him. Neither will we die all, as our brethren that were murdered in the secret places. Then came there unto him a company of Hazadians, who were mighty men of Yashrael, even all such as were voluntarily devoted unto the Torah. Also all they that fled for persecution joined themselves unto them, and were a stay unto them. So they joined their forces, and smote sinful men in their anger, and wicked men in their wrath. But the rest fled to the heathen for help. Then Matithyahu and his friends went round about, and pulled down the altars, and what children soever they found within the coast of Yashra'el uncircumcised, those they circumcised valiantly. They pursued also after the proud men, and the work prospered in, the ha in their hand. So they recovered the Torah out of the hand of the other nations and out of the hand of kings. Neither suffered they the sinner to triumph. Now when the time drew near that Matithyahu should die, he said unto his sons, Now has pride and rebuke gotten strength and the time of destruction and the wrath of indignation rather indignation. Now therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the Torah, and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. So shall ye receive great honor and an everlasting name. Was not Abraham found faithful in temptation? and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Yosef, in the time of his distress, kept the commandment and was made lord of Mitzrayim. Pinechach, our father, in being zealous and fervent, obtained the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. 
Yahusha, for fulfilling the word, was made a judge in Yashara'el. Kelev, for bearing witness before the assembly, received the heritage of the land. David, for being merciful, possessed the throne of an everlasting kingdom. Eliyahu, for being zealous and fervent for the Torah, was taken up into heaven. Chananyahu, Azariyahu, and Mishael, by believing, were saved out of the flame. Daniel, for his innocency, was delivered from the mouth of lions. And thus consider ye throughout all ages that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. Fear not then the words of a sinful man, for his glory shall be dung and worms. Today he shall be lifted up, and tomorrow he shall not be found, because he is returned into his dust, and his thought is come to nothing. Wherefore, ye my sons, be valiant, and show yourselves men, in the behalf of the Torah, for by it shall ye obtain glory. Behold, I know that your brother Shimon is a man of counsel. Give ear unto him always. He shall be a father unto you. As for Yahuda Maccabee, he has been mighty and strong, even from his youth up. Let him be your captain, and fight the battle of the people. Take also unto you all those that observe the Torah, and avenge ye the wrong of your people. Recompense fully the heathen, and take heed to the commandments of the Torah. So he blessed them, and was gathered to his fathers. and He died in the hundred forty and sixth year, and his sons buried him in the sepulchres of his fathers at Modin. And all Yashar'el made great lamentation for him. <laughs>